Hello everybody, this is Commander Cream, and today I am doing Victoria 3, but I am not doing any nation that is on this map at the moment. You see, I thought it would be a lot more interesting if I did something a little bit different, and played as Albania. I ran out of other challenges to do in this game. So I made up my own. This one is called Albania Against the World. Essentially, I have to do a humiliation diplomatic play against all of the great powers. So that would be France, Britain, Prussia, Austria, Russia, and the United States of America if the game hasn't slowed down to the pace of a dead sloth by the time I get to it. Also, just for another bit of challenge, I'm going to not incorporate any other states except for Albania itself. So Albania really doesn't start off in the worst spot possible in this game. They've got a decent amount of natural resources. They're going to get, they have oil, but you got to discover that, and that's going to take an immense amount of time. Also, the state has Terra Rosa, which gives 15% agriculture throughput. Also, we have iron. It would be great if we had coal, because those are the two main ingredients to do anything in this game. But you know, we got 50% of it. We can just import the rest. When it comes to laws, this is kind of where... Uh, where the problems are. So we have the slave trade, which is not great in case you didn't know. We don't have serfdom, which is pretty good. We have traditionalism, which is absolute crap. But in this case specifically, it actually isn't that bad since I don't have too much taxation capacity problems because I only have one state and all of my government administration will be in this state anyway. So it's actually not horrible because the main debuff it gives is the minus 25% taxation capacity. However, I would definitely like to switch to Interventionism or Laissez-Faire if I have the opportunity because of the investment pool, which is very, very useful. Other than the economic system, there's a few other things that are kind of backwards. We do not have schools, which is not a great idea. We also have land-based taxation, mainly just taxing the peasantry, which I plan to uh, get rid of most of them and put them in factories where they should be. We also have state religion, which isn't all that horrible, given that we have a majority um, Sunni, which is the state religion right here. We also have a monarchy, which isn't bad. We also have the autocracy, which again, isn't bad. However, I might go over to some of these other ones, but I'm not percent sure. We're definitely not gonna be low on authority, so I don't really need it, so I'll probably get rid of this. It'll help. Um, help me get the landowners out of the government, which is going to be helpful because they're not going to like the stuff I'm about to do. We also have hereditary bureaucrats, which is not great because it gives the landowners more political strength. So I would like to switch to appointed bureaucrats or elected bureaucrats at some point. Elected bureaucrats is just hereditary bureaucrats, but worse. So I'll probably go for appointed. We also have peasant levies, which is absolute poo. Landowners more political strength and it gives plus plus ten percent morale loss. So I'm gonna to switch to professional army as soon as I can. Well, as soon as I can. There, there might be a few other things that I might wanna switch out of first. When it comes to technology, this is where we're at with production. We haven't invented the cotton gin yet, which sucks. We don't have line infantry yet, we only have irregulars, and we also do not have currency standards, which means we can't upgrade our Taxation laws yet. Um, we don't have stock exchange, which means trade routes are going to be really expensive, which is going to be awful because I'm going to have to trade a lot because I don't have a lot of resources as a one state country. Um, I'm going to be booking it to romanticism so that I can get agrarianism and get out of traditional economy. As for Albania itself, the state is not all that bad. We have a lot of infrastructure apparently. Um, we have minus 1% tax collection, but that's going to go up pretty soon. We have Terra Rosa, which is a very, very nice modifier, which means we get more stuff when we do agriculture. We have iron mines, which is pretty great. That's half of the equation. We need iron and coal to make stuff, to make steel, which we need to make everything else. We have one textile mill, so we have two fishing wharves, two logging camps, one port. That is all. I forgot to show this a second ago, but uh, this is our ruler, our current king or duke, I guess. 
This person's going to be randomly generated, so I have no control over him. He's got amazing facial, facial hair. I like this last name right here. However, that is not all that great. That is also not that great. But you know, we can we can change these things. It's not going to stick around forever. He does have this, which is pretty decent as a commander. Makes him a pretty decent commander. So I am going to make him one. He will be our only commander of our zero battalions. All right, let the suffering begin. Since we have loads of authority and just one state, I'm just going to go mad with decrees. Just all of them. Diplomacy, yeah. 86% of our population is peasants, and all of them are spending all of their money on tobacco, which we do not produce. Not yet, that is. Welcome to a government, rural folk. I wonder what could go wrong. My boys, we cannot afford to be racist. We do not have the population that can allow this. This is the current economic plan. I'm going to get a construction sector so I can actually construct stuff and start spending money so I don't overinflate my gold reserves. And then we're going to build wheat farms just for basic subsistence. Tobacco, because apparently all my people are spending all of their money on it, despite the fact that we don't have any. We're also going to get livestock ranches for fertilizer and also a little bit of fabric and then cotton plantations for also fabric, which you, we can use to do textiles, which are very, very profitable. And then follow it up with some actual industry. So I want to get rid of the slave trade. All right. That makes sense. Slaves can't pay income taxes. So therefore, the government would want to get rid of this. Right. Well, there's a zero percent chance because I have to get the intelligentsia or the trade unions in here to do that, but I won't have enough legitimacy after that to actually pass this law. But I'm currently having an RNG thing where people want to enact legacy slavery. So this actually won't change anything because this will still be a slave state right here. However, right now, this is giving the landowners 50% political strength. If I do this, it'll do attract 25%. So I'm actually going to do this. Well, going to do this and actually doing it are very different in this game. Look at, look at what I said. Maybe another day we can finally stop buying people. Alright, so I can't suppress the landowners because they're in the government, alright? So I'm thinking it's going to have an equal effect if I just start bolstering everyone else. So we're going to see how that goes. I'll be honest, 50% of this game is just doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Just looking at a screen, waiting for this queue to finish. <laughs> so I'm going to be cutting out a great deal of it. I'll try to show this up. That's at least a little bit entertaining. All right, romanticism has been researched. Now I just got a hundred other things I got to do. <laughs> Once we get agrarianism going, then we'll have an investment pool and we can use that to fund stuff. I'll be, we won't really be able to fund a whole lot of stuff that we can actually use, but we'll be able to fund that infrastructure, which will be pretty nice as soon as I actually get to railways. Yeah, it's a, that's a few minutes away. We got agrarianism in two tries. That has got to be some kind of world record right there. Uh, time to go for religious schools next, I guess. I feel like paradox has made a mistake here. I feel like these should be the opposite. So that's... That's strange, but you know what? Um, I ain't got a problem with it. You know, not actually having an army kind of sucks, but you know what? At least I don't have to pay for one, which is pretty great. RN Jesus is smiling today. <laughs> no one is against me getting rid of slavery. That is amazing. <laughs> And I won't have to worry about anyone invading me because Albania is just is very intimidating. Awesome. Now our people can start thinking. I'm going to start working on naval bases now because they take absolutely forever to actually start functioning. You know, I've got all these industries and stuff, but like literally grain is my highest GDP. And then it's followed by wood and services. Like none of those are actual industrial goods i've got one state and it's already in turmoil 
This is the better option. Now that is a noteworthy idea. I'm not gonna lie, I've never had this easy of a time passing laws before. This has been like spooky how easy it's going. All right, I'm kicking the landowners out of the government so I can't uh, actually pass any laws because I have an illegitimate government, but this means that I can do this. And all of that out is gonna go and funnel down to all the other interest groups. So I've run into a bit of a predicament. There's going to be a revolution pretty soon if I don't enact a dedicated police force. However, I cannot enact a dedicated police force because I don't have... I can't put the landowners in the government because they're about to start a revolution. So, kind of screwed. I've only got one state, so let's see how this goes. All right, and the rebels have all of the stuff. Yeah, I think that is literally everything. We have one trade center. We have one trade center. That is it. Oh my gosh. They even got the barrack. Oh, but they switched it over. Okay. All right, so this might, this might actually work. Okay. If we can sway anyone, if we can sway anyone, then this should be no problem at all. Egypt. Sure. You know something? The Egyptians cannot actually reach this front. So it's 1 versus 11. Ah, uh, nuts. I think... Yeah, I think that's a restart. That has not happened before. I have never seen this screen before. Well then, I'll be back in a minute. I wonder how that happened. What the fuck? Here too. I reloaded the save and it's still here. It's very, very strange. Oh, I fixed it. Uh, these are still here, though. I'm not sure who about that, because if I put them up here, then it'll just do the thing behind it. It's just so strange how the previous monarch just decided just 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 leave and, and get up. He just he really wanted to spend more time with his family. But you know, this this new guy he's changed up my queue and everything. He's switched up all the old trade routes and stuff. I gotta, I gotta fix a few things. I'm going to try restarting the game to see if that fixes these. I, I don't know what to do about this anymore. Okay, so this has been flipped upside down. That I'm not, I'm not sure why, but it has. Every single set of laws has been flipped upside down. Usually this is at the bottom and this is on the top. I have no idea why that is. I haven't done anything to change that. I already tried restarting and it didn't help. So, yeah, it's just gonna look weird. All right, I've just about got the economy sorted out. Pretty soon we're gonna start our military expansion. All right, so it's been about three hours since the last clip. I think I know what I was doing, but I'm not 100% sure. I think this is what I was doing. Wonderful, it's just Montenegro. So, Montenegro, if you don't know why I'm invading, uh, they have lead mines. That is the only reason I'm invading. But you know, I, I you gotta start somewhere. You know, I have no idea how this has happened, but the landowners went from having 0% clout to like 70, and I don't know how. And the Montenegro has been officially squished. Look at that. The Albanian Empire has begun. President Marcus Gooch. The, the character traits of this guy. This guy is literally El Presidente. And the Albanian Colonial Empire begins. Well, we're fighting the French now, boyos. So, uh... 
This is going to be fun. First battle, and we are losing. We're not losing by a phenomenal amount. We got... We're, we're trading decently, but I, we were not able to get enough battalions in the fight initially. So I think I think we'll, we'll grind them down eventually. And try number two. Oh, oh, we're actually getting it. We're getting it. Oh, that's great. Woohoo. How much attrition? 66% attrition. Huh. I mean, I can't really... Can't really do anything about that. And we're gone. Let's go again. Alright, boys. Looks like we got it again. Oh my god, look at those losses. Oh, that is nasty. We are suffering 100% attrition. And, yeah, we can do is leave. And intervention is in the work. Battle number tres. And you have failed. Wow. Oh, no. The French blockade is starting to really hurt my businesses. I can't get any coal. Let's go. Oh, rapid advance. Okay, okay, okay. We might still get this. And 100%, 100%, let's go. So for those of you that, that don't really play this game all that much, if I have 100% attrition, that means that all my troops will be constantly at zero morale. So in other words, they will lose every single time. Well, my best hope is to not actually win, but to get them to die of exhaustion by just holding this territory. I don't have to keep beating them in battles. And here we go again. Taking out another chunk of it. Oh, we got breach load artillery. You're winning, even though you're at 100% attrition. That's that's impressive. All right, it looks like we're gonna get him to minus 100 if they don't push me out. Oh, all right. This we now have the Albanian Madagascar. This is the way it was meant to be. I think we are going to go after Oman next. Now, Austria, why? Why? You have nothing to gain from this. Now, that is a nice general. Here we go. All right, it looks like we're about to quick scope them. Yeah, having some issues over here. It's seven battalions versus 126. We do have a technological advantage, though, which is pretty sweet. And for some reason, we keep winning. I really don't get it. But, you know, usually it's annoying when stuff like that happens. But if it works, it works. Man, they just keep coming and they just keep losing. <laughs> they just don't stop. Look at this. This is eight battles I've won. Now that is very remarkable. The French are invading England and the English are invading France. But nobody is invading Albania. Alright, apparently Austria does not want to stop. Minus 1% when well, you want to stop so bad. There we go. The Albanian Empire only grows larger. You know, I've been avoiding using dyes this whole time, but now that I have access to the Omani and Malagasy market, apparently they're making dyes, which is great. Alright, so I've been avoiding invading the Ottoman Empire this whole time because they were had an alliance with France. Apparently, truces only apply to the player. As I found out, as I played this game. So I've been avoiding invading them. Because I know that the French forces will just annihilate me on land. But it appears they've had a bit of a falling out. So I think I know what my next target is going to be. Because they are using irregular infantry. And I am using shrapnel artillery. And skirmish infantry. So I think, despite the fact that it's going to be like 15 against 100, I'm... Probably still gonna win. All right, boys, this is gonna be the one that decides it. The Russians will join for a treaty port here. Seems like a fair deal to me. All right, now what do I want? I want Skopje. I'll settle for a fat stack of cash. Oh. Well, that's awesome. 
You see, the reason I wanted to invade was because I wanted this province specifically, which has all this coal here, which is extremely important. You know, I just realized that I've inadvertently added Kosovo to Albania. <laughs> That's interesting. I kind of want to incorporate it, but I said that I wouldn't. You know, so many people died in the Oman War that, like, I actually, like, none of my, a lot of my factories are severely lacking workers. Uh, like, the, the tools and the steel, the, yeah. Yeah, there's no peasants. This is, <laughs> I've, I've never had this problem. All right, so the worker shortage I was just talking about uh, has solved itself, apparently, because a enormous amount of Jewish people are moving to my country, which is pretty cool all right the voices in my head are telling me to do things i don't want to do i'll be back in about 12 hours oh no that is a problem for later i will deal with this in the future you can see your family when I'm done recording this YouTube video, okay? Is that, is that, can you understand that? Okay. Hello everyone, I'm back. And let's see how Albania is doing. I have noticed since the last recording, I, uh, had, oh, never mind, there it goes. And is it the same thing again? Uh, yep, okay. So, actually, while I was gone, because I thought this thing was going to be here when I got here, I devised an ingenious plan to prevent the French from uh, killing me, alright? There. So that does lose us a mildly valuable ally. Well, they're, they're still here, but they've kind of lost all their stuff. However, I have noticed that they do tend to build stuff in Zanzibar. They built one textile mill. That's, that's something, I guess. So the next on my hit list is going to be New Granada, also known as Colombia. And the main reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to conquer Venezuela. However, they are a protectorate of America, but they have an alliance with New Granada. So I might be able to puppet both of them without having to fight the Americans, which would be pretty awesome. And I can't puppet either of them. That's unfortunate, but I can take their money which is wonderful and always useful. We can actually sway the Americans to help us against, against the Venezuelans. Uh, that's wonderful. And we're going to have to fight the Russians. Uh, that's unfortunate, but you know what? Russia really isn't that strong. Their AI is just kind of kind of crap. They do have a pretty decent navy, which is, in fact, bigger than a little old Albania's. So that could pose a noteworthy issue. However, our troops are better than theirs. So that, and here we go. And here's the first battle and we are winning. That's amazing. However, I expect to take 100% attrition as soon as this battle is over. 20%, that's, that's not horrible. It's usually worse than that. Okay, I can live with that. That's great. Dude, I just, I love how the front will split into two when I only have one general there. That's that's really fun. That's a that's a really ingenious design. And he's gone. <sighs> Rinse and repeat. Apparently the Galapagos Islands are part of this state and not their own separate state. And I find that to be rather odd. And are we going to win? Yep. All right, so we'll be able to land, but there's no saying what's going to happen after that. Let's see. I'm guessing it's going to split in two fronts again. Yep, <laughs> look at that. And it's going to take my other general 63 days to get there. That's that's wonderful. That's real nice. And it's gone already. Wonderful. I'm going to try landing somewhere else, see if that'll fix the problem. And we have lost this one. That's unfortunate. All right, it appears that the... Russians are at war with the British, which is pretty great because they should distract them for me. And there's only one front. Oh, this this day just keeps getting better and better. It seems like we need to hold our own just fine. All right, I might have lied. Uh, we might get pushed back. Oh, one day. Oh, okay. The rest of the the rest of the the boys are here. All right, that, that'll work. 
And immediately we get 39% attrition. I called it. I called it. I said it would happen, and it happened. And you're immediately losing. Three fronts. And my other general moved back here. I love the war system in this game. It's so, so great. So hands off. Four fronts. Five fronts. All right, I figured out why we're losing. It's, uh, it's happening again. So about 50% of that, that means he's lost right around 50, 25 battles. I'm pulling out my offensive general and I'm just gonna spit him back out over here. Does appear that the Venezuelans are at war with the Americans and the Mexicans. No, just the Americans. All right, and they're also being invaded by the British, which aren't involved in either of those wars. Which doesn't make sense, but it means that their war support is just gonna plummet. All right, I managed to land the front split into two again, but those two fronts are disconnected. So I'm not 100% sure how that's happening. And it's split into four fronts, oh, that's great. Five fronts, do you think we can make it to six? I need to learn how to count. All right, the Venezuelans are no longer at war with the British, which makes my job a whole lot more difficult. Funny enough, I found that this war with Venezuela has been a whole lot more difficult than the war with France, which I find to be rather interesting. And my one general decided that just out of nowhere, he wanted to go back home. And now the front is gone. All, all six of them. Now explain this to me. Why is there one front here, which is quite literally split into two halves? But there's six fronts if I invade over here. 55% attrition, let's go. You know, I'm honestly wondering why I'm taking so much attrition because, as you can see, like this is a supply route, all right? And it doesn't show that any of my convoys are getting raided at the moment. So I really, I'm very confused as to why that has happened. All right, so the Russians have absolutely nothing to gain from this, all right? So I've taken I've taken 30,000 casualties, all right, which which really really sucks because I'm already lacking population as it is, and the Russians have taken 135,000. You can see it go up in real time too. And it so they're going to be dropping out pretty soon. As soon as this hits 100, they should drop out. And after that, there should be no one stopping me from just walking through all of this, except if it obviously splits into six fronts. I'm honestly starting to wonder if it's worth it to invade Russia just so that I can get them to piss off. Because this, they're, they're really the only ones stopping me right now. Okay, so the last clip I recorded, apparently I, uh, I didn't record it, but um, basically I found out that the Russians can in fact go over a hundred when it comes to this. But they, they still dropped out anyway after they got out to like 105. So now I'm just fighting the Venezuelans, Ecuadorians, and Colombians. So this this should be a whole lot easier now. If you can look at all my industries, almost none of them have any people in them. <laughs> I cannot afford to keep going to war. Dude, look at how many battles there's been. Dude, that is... You can't even see all of them. It's like a kelp forest. So since I've lost all of my uh, workers in Albania, um, everyone, since all of my industries are lacking people to actually produce stuff, then all the uh, people around me have started uh, exporting lots of things to me. So I'm actually producing very little domestically and I'm actually importing mostly everything, which you know, kind of awful, kind of really bad, but I mean, I, I can't really change that because I have free trade, and even if I did have free trade, you can't cancel uh, trade routes that other countries own. So we are right outside the Colombian capital, and it's ours. They should be, yep, they should be dead any minute now. And there we go. We now have puppeted Colombia. That was really, honestly, not worth it at all. But uh, we've done it. So that's cool. Now we just got to take out Venezuela and Ecuador. 
or we can just say no and pass the uh, free money, but I think we can beat them. I think it will be worth it, so I'm going to. Never mind, I lied. Trying to puppet Costa Rica. The Americans have joined them. So hopefully we can overrun them before the Americans actually show up. There we go. And that was, that was mostly Colombia, because I didn't actually show up in time. And we got another one. So we're going after Nicaragua now, or Honduras. And the British have sided with the Hondurans. However, they haven't dedicated any troops. So it's just, it's four against 21 now. So I think, I think we got this one. The Zanzibar people uh, rose up and are no longer my puppet. So the only thing left of Oman is these two provinces and this one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's an issue. <laughs> All right, it has happened again. The, ah, shit. All right, so Prussia, if I remember right, oh, they start out the game with five ships and they've upgraded it to 134. So I honestly see no way of winning this. I guess the only way is to just to prevent them from landing in Albania itself. I don't see us being able to land in uh, Prussia, but we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll figure something out. My wooden ships are being obliterated by battleships at the moment, uh, so it does not look like we are going to be able to land here. In fact, I'll have to figure out something else. Um, however, we are defending against their naval landings, which is pretty great. Also, the Prussians are using trench infantry, it seems, which is... Uh, Better than mine, and they have shrapnel artillery on some of them, some of them too. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so their troops are better than mine, and their boats are better than mine. And also, they have more ships than me, that are, and are, they also have better ships. I'm just going to have to defend for now, it seems, and hope that they don't land on me. Thankfully, trench infantry, uh, it has really high defense, but its attack is... Not all that different from a uh, skirmish infantry. 40 offense, 30 offense. All right, so it's not awful. We we can we can still make this. It looks like their war support is dropping quicker than ours. And we have lost Oman. Not just lost them in the war, because they were the only people in the war with me. The only one of my puppets, apparently. But, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, I do not have them as a puppet anymore because they had a revolt. However, that's really not too much of a problem with their zero battalions and zero ships and a hundred thousand gdp so i'm not all too worried about that i wonder what could go wrong in fact this is what could go wrong as it turns out for some reason me losing a naval battle has lowered their war support more than mine which i find kind of strange but you know what I, that's fine the americans are <laughs> Fighting El Salvador. They are establishing a colonial empire. Good for them. Alright, so the uh, last year or so has been complete chaos. I've had two uh, revolutions. And because the Prussians are raiding all of my convoys, all my generals will get 100% attrition as soon as they attack. Which... Uh, means that no matter how good my troops are, they're going to lose every single time. So doesn't seem to happen when I do naval invasions, which is pretty great. Um, I was able to do it fine the last few times because there were no battalions on the other side, but this time there is one. So I, uh, yeah, I don't think I can win this. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, no, I, I actually got it that time. All right, we, it's all right. The rich people don't need to pay taxes. And we have one. Awesome. So, so far we have won a war against France, Prussia, and Russia. Now we just need to get Austria, Britain, and America. Well, actually we did beat the Americans. So it's just Austria and Britain now. So let's get to it, I guess. The British seem to have actually downsized their navy a little bit. If I remember right, they start out with right around 100. So that, that could be pretty helpful. And also their, oh my goodness, their GDP has tanked. I 
Not sure why that has happened. I still haven't found a way to get rid of these null state things in the queue, which is really, really annoying. But I mean, what what can I do about it? If I knew how to fix them, then I won't be complaining about it now. And it looks like we're fighting France again, boys. And we immediately won. I found that in this playthrough, it seems like Britain and France have been a lot more aggressive than usual. And speaking of Britain, what the... Emperor Henry Seymour of Great Britain. Okay, then. Good for them. I think this is actually the worst pop-up event I have ever gotten. They both do the same thing, and both of those things are awful. Most of the uh, population that turned into radicals from that uh, event were actually already loyalists, so I just lost like 75% of all my loyalists. You know, I just said that I had to fight Austria, and then I remembered that I already did that. So it's actually just Great Britain that I have left. So I'm trying to get Venezuela before I take out the British. And the French have sided with them, apparently. So that's, that's gonna, it's gonna be fun doing this again. <laughs> and I have done it once again. The Albanian colonial empire has grown even greater. All right, the game is starting to slow down quite a lot. So I really got to get this invasion of Britain down pretty soon or else this game just isn't going to be playable anymore and the Venezuelans have already revolted and there we go all right the British GDP has doubled since the last time I saw it and also it looks like they're starting to increase the size of their military in fact I think their battalions has gone down now Turkey is having a bit of a problem at the moment we have discovered oil boys you know, I actually just remembered that I have already beaten Great Britain as well. So I've actually already beaten every single great power. And I've just, I just spent like 20 minutes building up my navy so that I could take on the British, but I've already beaten them. Huh. I've beaten every single great power as Albania. I have beaten Austria, Prussia, Russia... France, France three times actually, Great Britain, and America. We also have the number six highest standard of living worldwide. Pretty crummy literacy rate, but you know, people don't need to read, they just need to work. Um, we have grown our GDP from basically nothing to number 14 worldwide. We also have the eighth worldwide largest GDP per capita. If you like the Albanian colonial empire as much as I did, please like and consider subscribing. And now that I'm finally done, I have a million people to work with. That's it. If you want me to make more Victoria 3 videos, then put tell me in the comments. That's it. Bye.